Hello, everyone. My name is Marco, and welcome to the Town Hall of the Google Innovation Challenge in Latin America. I'm here with Ludo today. Hello, everyone. And we're going to be answering the most important questions about the, the Innovation Challenge. But first, let me speak about the Google News Initiative, which is much bigger than the challenge. The Google News Initiative is an effort across the company to really show what we're doing to help the, uh, the journalism industry thrive in the digital age. And this is not coming only for Google Teams. This is coming from Sundar himself. Um, he says that Google cares deeply about journalism, and it's in the heart of Google's mission. It's the mission of publishers and journalists. And put, simply put, our futures are tied. Uh, yes, then um, we're, we're going to talk about how the Google News Initiative as well is something that's much bigger than innovation challenge, right? We have committed more than um, $120 million about for projects, and the Google News Initiative has three pillars. The first one is evolving business models. The second one is elevating quality journalism. And the third one is empowering newsrooms with technology. And as I mentioned, we have committed $120 million in projects, and this is much bigger the innovation challenge itself. It shows that we have teams around the world uh, supporting and doing projects and initiatives with teams in the countries and news organizations uh, in over 70 countries to support uh, journalism. And the innovation challenge is just one of these initiatives. And I'm here today uh, with Ludo to talk about it. But first, let me mention that the GNI APAC Innovation Challenge has just finished and we had over 200 applicants and 23 projects were selected. And Ludo, uh, can you can you give us a couple of examples of uh, we, what kind of projects were selected in Asia so that folks here in Latin America uh, can also see examples of what projects might be awarded here too? Sure, I'm happy to share that a bit. Just to introduce myself quickly, I'm the head of uh, GNI Innovation, so I'm leading the program, right? And um, you can sometimes be lost when we speak about GNI, DNI, LATAM, APAC. To make it clear, APAC, it's Asia Pacific. So the GNI Challenge Program is open call for projects that we are doing in regions. And we've done the first call for project in Asia Pacific. It was a very specific call for project because the focus was around readers' revenue. As Marco explained, we received 215 projects and we selected 23 projects, all about the topic of readers' revenue. And what was really surprising for us is the diversity of idea we had, diversity of project we received on such a kind of narrow topic. You can have the feeling that Reader's Revenue is just about business model and just about paywalls, right? Getting money from subscribers, but it's much more diverse than that. So we selected 23 projects from Hong Kong, India, Pakistan, Australia, and I'm going to mention a couple of projects. So for example, we had uh, this idea of creating a rewarding approach for the member of a website so they can themselves promote the website and be the content ambassadors for the website that want to spread the content. So it's really engaging the community to make sure they are the one um, uh, doing the promotion of your content. We have an ex another example in India where a startup um, uh, created by two young students really wanted to solve the issue of having premium content only um, dedicated to people that can afford it, that can pay for it. So they created something, a kind of small tools, a small tool that is positioned in between the paywall and the log content, and that would offer everyone in the audience to achieve a task in order to unlock the content. So rather than paying for it, you do a task. For example, you fill a survey or you just register into something 
and then you can access the content. So it's a way to do content discovery. We had the first paywall in um, Nepal because something that is very important when we talk about innovation, we don't want to define innovation. Innovation depends of your starting point. Innovation depends of the local media landscape. So ex we expect everyone that is applying to explain why his project is innovative. And you can see that the range of project is very diverse. I will mention other examples later. But no, let's go back to Marco with the announcement and something that we are really proud of. Marco. Yeah, thank you, Ludo. And as you may have heard, uh, we have in the next slide you will see we are we were very proud to announce the Innovation Challenge here in Latin America. We announced it on June sixth, and it is a big opportunity for everyone to come up with ideas. You know, sometimes you have an idea that you want to take it off of the paper, but you don't have the resources, you don't have the political will, or you have don't have the opportunity to do it. And the Innovation Challenge is exactly this opportunity to take the ideas that you have with your teams to really innovate and give you the space to do more. So we announced this challenge, but the challenge in Latin America is a little bit, is a little bit different from the challenge in Asia Pacific. Uh, we have a different theme and we have, uh, it's a different idea. And I would like to invite you back, Ludo, to, to talk about more specifically about the challenge in Latin America, how the challenge is different from the challenge in Asia Pacific, and what exactly is that that we're looking for uh, uh, in terms of the challenge, the theme, and what we can do and what we cannot do. Uh, so Ludo, please. Thank you, Marco. And yes, I will walk everyone through the application process and uh, share tips. Um, one thing that is very important that you explained, Marco, um, we've tested this challenge approach in Europe and in Asia Pacific. Why are we doing that? We are doing that because we want to stimulate ideas. We want to stimulate innovation. And what we've heard from everyone in the news ecosystem is that sometimes you lack time and money to do that. And sometimes the most important is the time. Daily operation are really time consuming. All the focus is, is there. And the application process in itself gives the opportunity to, um, to, to step back from the daily operation, brainstorm with the team, build a vision, and come with an idea. And that is the most important, right? So consider the application process as an opportunity and the funding as a way to unlock innovation, but the most important will be taken out of the application process. So first, eligibility. And one thing that is very important, I'm gonna explain now all the rules and criteria. Please use the chat window to ask questions. You can write your question. Please try to write it in English, but this is fine if it's in Portuguese or Spanish. Marco will handle it. So uh, write your question, and we're going to take all your question in about 15 minutes uh, after my quick presentation. And Marco, always feel free to jump on it and to clarify and to add your thinking, right? So first, eligibility. When we speak about the news ecosystem, this is not a buzzword. We think that stimulation can come from everyone. So basically, everyone, you can be a startup, you can be a traditional newspaper online, online only player, whoever that have an idea for news and a project is eligible to apply. You just need to be registered in one of the Latin American country that is eligible. Uh, almost all countries are eligible. So just have a registered entity, even very small, and you're eligible to apply. In terms of focus, yes, it's different than what we've done in uh, Asia Pacific. We go from some, for something a bit broader. So the focus is around projects that help to build a more sustainable ecosystem through the development of new business model and new news product, right? So focus, new business models, 
with an S, so business models can be multiple, and new news products with an S as well. So why do what do we mean exactly? Um, next slide, please. Yes, so what, we, what do we mean? So first we are looking at ways to diversify revenue streams. It can be through direct payments coming from readers. It can be, of course, paywalls, subscriptions, membership. It can be also micropayments, the creation of a digital news currency. It can be a membership or just a registration program. It can be indirect payments. You would have sponsorship, sponsoring bundle that you're going to do with others publication where you are bundling content and you have bundle offers. Um, it can be a relationship with a non-news subscription entity that will bundle an access to uh, your content. We are also looking for new digital product and services. And I will give some examples, but it's basically the creation of a specific new product that can be a standalone product or a new vertical, a new feature you are adding to your current offer. And um, it has to have a very specific package, packaging, and way to interact users because it's about also increasing the user engagement, increasing the time spent on your uh, website, mobile app, or, um, or, or, or any devices that you are offering, increase uh, the pages per visit, the loyalty, and um, of course, the number, the conversion rate, for example, in the subscription model. I'm going to take now, if we can go to the next slide, uh, I would like to share some inspiring projects. Those are taken from uh, what we've done in Europe through the DNI fund. Uh, and you can absolutely go on our website, the Google News Initiative website, and look at our DNI program or the GNI challenge we've done in APAC to look at some projects. We have more than 662 projects listed on DNI section of our website, and this might be really inspiring for you. So, first example um, this is a, a project that has been done by a local publisher in uh, Australia. Uh, Austria a pretty big local publisher, local and regional, and they wanted to increase the engagement on their website. And they had the feeling that gamification approaches that are very uh, often used on mobile can be relevant for news content as well. And they basically created a reward and gamification program where when you like, when you add to a favorite, when you comment, when you share your expertise, when you participate in any way to the propagation of the content or to the co-creation of the content, you are rewarded for it. And for that, they created a specific currency and that works very well. So it's, it also gave opportunity to create new kind of commercial partnership um, with uh, brands. Uh, another one, which is more about the creation of a new news product, we are in Ireland, and this is coming from the Irish Times. The Irish Times realized that important part of its audience was coming from overseas, and especially from America. And they had the feeling, looking at the metrics, that those people didn't consume exactly the same content as their audience in Ireland. So they decided to create a specific product, a specific vertical, a specific dedicated part of their website and their application for this specific audience with content that is repackaged for the purpose to, of serving better what this kind of audience is consuming 
new specific features, new specific services, uh, poll specially created for and tailored for this audience. And they would have also a specific monetization approach of this audience. So that is an example of a new product. Um, let me share now a more, I would say, technological example, because that's important to have in mind that sometimes innovation is really about technology, cutting edge technology, and sometimes the innovation is not around technology, but more on the business model. So I want to share here an example of a technological innovation. We are in Belgium. Um, it's done by a financial weekly that is very strong online and they have uh, an important number of subscribers. But they wanted to serve better their, their subscriber and, um, and make sure once they've subscribed, they would really consume the content and they, would, they wanted also to reduce the churn. For that, they realized they had to go into the creation of niche content in order to serve very specific audiences. And it was complicated to create specific content at scale for very niche audiences. So they used a, a, um, a computing technology to create content automatically. So through artificial intelligence and machine learning, they are creating content automatically about uh, market stock and about sport. Because when you have aggregated data, such as for market and for uh, stock exchange and for uh, sport, it's pretty easy to produce automatically small pieces of content. They, they, they created and they create content on very, very niche topics. People can subscribe to it and receive five or more newsletter a day that are automatically generated. Of course, the purpose is not to replace the journalist, but to free journalist time so journalists can really add value and provide in-depth analysis that goes uh, with uh, this automated content that is just giving insights about very niche and specific topics. Um, next one, please. It's called REMP. And I'm sharing this one because this one has uh, a huge ecosystem impact. Um, we are in Slovakia and the publisher there realized that when you want to shift and to pivot into a paywall model, sometimes you don't have all the tools to do it, especially when you are a small and medium newspaper. So when you are small, you sometimes need tools that are not the same as the big ones are um, using. So they decided to create a specific toolkit, so a set of tools for small players that want to pivot into subscription model. And it's not just about creating a paywall. They've created a paywall, a mailer, a customer relationship manager, and a data um, analytics system that predict both the churn for the subscription uh, subscribers and the propensity to subscribe for uh, the audience. All those tools are made open source. So uh, you can just go on GitHub and use it, download it. So it's fully open source. This is why it has an ecosystem impact. But for them, it has a huge impact as well in terms of business model, because first, they are using all those tools internally. And second, they provide support and service for small company that, are, that want to implement it and that needs to have a technical support, even if it's open source. So interesting project because it both bring value in terms of revenue creation and also um, uh, um, uh, give the opportunity to have a, a huge uh, ecosystem approach that can benefit to everyone. So back to the Latin America challenge. Uh, how does the funding work? So first, Google will fund up to 250K for selected projects. But we're going to 
correspond up to 70% of the overall cost. What does it mean? It That's means that US you... Dollars, right, Pluto? 250K US dollars. US dollars, yes, sorry. 250,000 US dollars, right? So, um, and it's up to 70% of the overall cost. You will have to provide an overall budget, right? And we can take up to 70% of it which means that we can say no to the project, we can say yes to the project, full funding, and give the funding you requested, or we can lower the amount of funding. And on the 30% part, you will have to afford to put on top of the project, we are actually not asking for dollars. We are not asking for money. We are asking for resources. So the 30% on your side, it's allocation of resources, which might include engineering, equipment cost, marketing expenses, right? But on the Google side, we are not funding editorial cost. You can put for some journalistic um, uh, resources only on the 30%. Um, very important to understand that we are funding project. We are not funding the overall operation of a company. We are funding projects that should be specific, and we are not funding pure content creation. So do not apply just for a great idea about an investigation piece. There are many other initiatives for that, but for, with the GNI challenge, we are funding the overall product, a project, a product that is about technology, that is about packaging of content, circulation of content, about mobile, about business model, about sustainability, but it cannot be just content creation. If you, have, if you are a big group, you can send up to three projects and maximum one per brand. So to make it clear, you have a specific brand, specific title, just one project. If you are a group, up to three projects, one per brand. Important, application are submitted in English only. But when you go on the website, you will see all the rules and criteria and the explanation in Portuguese and Spanish. So you can totally prepare in your own language. You can even use Google Translate if you want. It's not an academic contest, right? But the application is submitted in English only so we can uh, review more easily. Uh, one last thing, the project is yours. Google is giving money. We are stimulating the ecosystem. We are giving the selected project, the selected recipients, they own the IP. And uh, the challenge are not about Google product. Feel free to use Google product if you want, but you don't have to. There is no requirement. And you own the intellect property, uh, intellectual property of a project. Next slide, please. So what we are looking for is Specific projects, again, should be around digital, around online news, but the project should be something really focused, really specific. It's not just supporting your overall operation, your modernization roadmap. It's about innovation slash transformation. It's not just the current digital modernization or roadmap or just supporting what you are doing. It's giving you the chance, giving you room to try new things. So that's the opportunity. And the project can be focused on one specific organization or it can be collaborative. And actually, we really welcome collaborative approaches. So feel totally free to collaborate with other publisher in your region, with new startup, with academic, or with publisher in other countries, right? Collaborate with anyone you want. We really we welcome those kind of approaches. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of uh, eligibility, uh, again, I would say very diverse. So all ideas within the topics of um, business models and new news products are eligible, but again, we are not funding project limited to content creation. It cannot just be modernization, so not just upgrades of legacy publishing system. We are not funding training of education only program. Part of your project can be 
around using training or education, but the whole focus cannot be training and education. This is not something we are funding through uh, this program. And um, we need to have something that demonstrates the potential of sustainability. You cannot be sure, but share indicators. If it's about model, a business model, share monetization plan. It's about increasing readers' engagement, share metrics. And we are not funding projects that are just about research. Now let's have a look at uh, the criterias, the criterias we're going to use to assess the project. Basically, we are um, uh, looking at four criterias. The first one is the impact impact on you, on your organization, and impact on the ecosystem. And I mentioned uh, previously the um, REMP project, an open source project, of course, by nature, an open source project has an impact on the ecosystem because everyone can use it. But there is, it's not mandatory to be open source, of course. There are many ways to have an impact on the ecosystem. You can collaborate you can do something that has never been done before, or you can do something that has been done before, but you do that in a new way. You have new ways to approach things, right? So explain us why do you think it has an impact on the ecosystem? Second criteria is of course innovation and use of technology. Again, sometimes innovation is about technology and sometimes not, so feel free to be innovative in many ways, but explain why it's innovative. Then we look at the feasibility with the team behind. What is, how do you mitigate the risk? The kind of numbers you are providing. So again, provide business plan, provide indicators and be consistent. Don't always ask and shoot for the cap. You don't need to ask 250,000 uh, US dollars if the project can be done just with 50,000, right? Try to be consistent, uh, aim to build a prototype, a minimum value, valuable product, and um, explain us how you are doing that. Then the inspiration, how do you plan to share the learnings and uh, to inspire others, right? Um, next is uh, the governance, basically, how does it work? Very, uh, to, to make it short, the project team, Marco is part of the project team, I'm part of the project team. We will just uh, review all application. Many people will review and read all application. We will discuss all the application and make a first shortlist. Once we've done the first shortlist, we will start having conversation with applicants, with shortlisted applicants. We will conduct interviews ask for additional information, and then we will make another shortlist. We will produce recommendation and we will present the uh, recommended project to a jury. Jury will be made of Google executive and also expert from the industry. And based on our recommendation, they will take the final uh, decision, they will vote and uh, take the final decision and oversee the overall operations. Um, next slide, please. Um, now, uh, very quickly, have a look at the application, how it works. You go on GNI website, uh, the Google News Initiative website, there is a section called Innovation Challenges, and you will find a Latin America uh, application section. You have an FAQ, Frequently Asked Question, and then you can click and see the page you have you have uh, currently in front of you, which is the application form. What I suggest is just click on the PDF, the PDF of the application form, and print it. Even if it's not very digital, just print it and take time to brainstorm with your team to work on it. Use any um, text uh, edit document you want. Start answering, go in depth, think really about what you want to share, explain why it's innovative, and when you are happy and proud with what you've done, 
just copy paste it in the application form and submit. This is basically uh, what I recommend you to do. So a couple of tips for applicant, really take time. Uh, next slide, please, Irene. Um, um, takes time to um, spend time on our website. Read the terms and conditions. Read the frequently asked question carefully. It's both in Spanish and in English. Um, have in mind that we are um, aiming to fund projects that will be executed in about one year, right? So no more than one year execution, right? This is the intent. Of course, if it's one year and a couple of months, we are not going to withdraw the funding, but it would be uh, a conversation because we really want you or uh, to kind of execute quick, to learn quickly, and then decide to scale or pivot. So one year execution, uh, collaborative projects are really welcome, include clear indicators, think about the impact uh, on the ecosystem and how do you plan to share the learnings. If you have any question, you can reach out to the team. We are happy to answer questions. The email is latamgnichallenge at google.com, latamgnichallenge at google.com. You still have uh, about 10, day, 10 days, even 12 to apply, so still time to really brainstorm. Don't rush, uh, but it's time to, to work on it very seriously. The application window will close on July 22nd, July 22nd. So again, step back. Print the, uh, the application, start brainstorming with the team, break the silos. Everyone in the company might be involved, and that's super interesting to share with others. And uh, go on our website to be inspired and to uh, look at um, the eligibility and the criteria and the questions and the application form. Website address, g.co slash news innovation. Email again if you have question, LATAM. Um, GNI challenge at google.com. There is a typo here. So lat, it's LATAM GNI challenge at uh, google.com. We are now going to take some questions, right? Um, I'm going to end over to Marco again. Yes. I Thank think you. we have questions now. And I can yeah, we, have, we have a lot of questions. We have lots of questions. Thank you, Ludo. Uh, I try to group the questions in, uh, into um, categories, so I'm going to try to organize them uh, as best as I can. But keep keep asking questions in the chat. We'll, we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Uh, so first, Ludo. First, we have questions about the number of projects and related questions, right? So Gilberto Schofield asked the question about, he says, our project involves three fact-checking partners, uh, three fact-checking platforms in Latin America, Chequeado from Argentina, Agencia Lupa, and Estadão Verifica from Brazil. Can just one platform apply in the name of the others? So it's actually how it works. When you have a collaborative project, what you should do is always have a lead applicant. And when you, you fill the application form, you will have to select, you have a selector where you can say if it's a collaborative project or uh, individual project, so uh, without any collaborators. When you select the collaborative project, the lead applicant or the one that is uh, filling will have to list the partners. And you can even add partners after along the way, that's totally fine. And the way we're gonna uh, handle it, if the project is selected, we sign the contract with the lead applicant, only one, the partners are listed, and the lead applicant is managing the relationship on both sides, on the Google side and uh, with the partners. Right. Um, there's also another question from Enrique Gomez. He asks whether, uh, teams and companies can submit more than one project. 
So uh, teams and company can submit more than one project, but they don't have to. I think it's always about being consistent. So first, let's start by the rule. So this is the rule. A group of publishers that have many brands can send up to three projects, maximum three projects, one per brand, one per title. If you are a small company with just one brand, it's maximum one project. So three per group, one per brand. When you say a group, you say like a media conglomerate that has lots of newsrooms under its arms, right? Yes, but they need to have different brands. So imagine right. a media group, a publishing a company that have three different uh, news brand, a daily, right. weekly, and a financial paper. Right? Or a TV channel or a radio station, right. But it's, it's within the same group. When you say group, it's not like a group that was formed specially for the challenge. No. But okay. I mean, people can do whatever they want, right? The only right. thing, if you create a startup specifically for this challenge, because you, 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 you need a registration number to apply, you need to have a registered entity. If you set up a startup and then you apply, that's your call. Yeah, that's, that's good that you mentioned that because um, Lucas Maya also asked whether projects in the initial phase without a legal entity, whether they could apply. And I think the, the answer is no, right? The answer is no, you need to have a legal entity, but a, a legal entity, of course, it depends on the country and I cannot provide any uh, legal advices, right? So you need to speak with legal counsel, but in many places, having just something registered is pretty often very simple, right? So you need to have uh, to be registered at the time of the application. It doesn't mean you need to have all the business up and running, right? By yeah. the way, you mentioned that, Marco, also another clarification. The project we are going to fund should be early stage projects, right? So it can be done by early stages company or very old legacy companies, but the project itself should be yeah early stage or should be to be created, right? So it can be yes. at the design prototype mode, but it cannot be something that is fully up and running at the time of the application. Right, so not an idea that's already ongoing and you want to update or fund a, like a new part of this idea that already exists and is already running, right? So no. new project, the prototyping phase yeah. or projects that hasn't, uh, being executed yet. Yeah, you can have a prototype, you can have a minimum value of a product, you can even use something that is already up and running and you would create something pretty new out of it or pivot, but it cannot be just expansion or extension. Right, uh, just Lucas, I know that you asked in the chat, Lucas Pauline, whether a collective would apply in that group. So as long as you have a legal entity, you can apply for the, the challenge. And like Ludo said, we cannot provide legal assistance because there are many countries in Latin America, but as long as you have a legal entity, you are eligible to apply. Let's move on to, to questions around content. Uh, Luis Campuzano asked whether niche sites are also eligible to apply. He has a anime and manga news website. Uh, but there are other questions too about, um, you know, like health or like business driven. Niche sites would, would also be eligible to apply, Ludo? So it's a great question. Thanks for asking. And um, so first, yes, niche sites are absolutely eligible to apply. And also, and I'm sharing also personal suits, right? I think niche has huge opportunities in terms of engagement, in terms of a conversion rate, because they have a very engaged audience. So for subscription model, for paid for newsletter or registration, huge opportunity for niches, right? Now, let me be clear. We are operating under the Google News Initiative, and you explained before, right? The Google News Initiative is Google framework for collaboration and dialogue with the industry, with the news ecosystem, in order 
to help and to build a sustainable uh, future for the industry, right? So it, it, it's made of many initiatives and the target is really journalism, quality journalism and so, right? It's true that our core focus will be closer to, let's say, news and current affair, right? The mainstream classical journalism. Who's reporting original content. And, and you have to produce, of course, original content. That said, if you are a producer of a niche uh, um, a player that is close to news current affairs, that is doing real journalism, but you have very specific topic closer to entertainment and stuff, even if it's not our core audience, to be honest, if you have a project that has a real impact on the ecosystem. So everyone that is a publisher can use it and it can benefit everyone because when you set up subscription, churn rate program or whatever, it can have an impact for many news players, then you would score more on the impact and ecosystem criteria and, um, and you are eligible. So yes, eligible, but then think about how you can compensate in order to have something that not just benefits your business, but also the ecosystem. Yeah. Tiago Lobo, Agnes, and Philippe Speck uh, asked questions about uh, content and what whether Google would fund parts of the project or not. And I think I can, I can take some of those questions. So Tiago asked, are there specific funding lines for media education projects? Uh, Philippe Speck said editorial costs means paying for content production. And Agnes asked whether projects related to academic research in groups dedicated to create content to vulnerable social groups, whether they would be uh, eligible. And also there was a question about would it be possible to create something inside an existing platform such, such as web radio. And I, I like to say that, as Ludo mentioned, uh, we are asking folks to be focused on the product, the new news product, and also the new business models. If your project has an editorial component that needs to be done in order to produce this new, uh, the new product and it's part of the strategy, or whether it has an educational component, uh, you might, you are, you can include that in your project, but your project cannot be about education cannot be about pure creation of content, right? We're not looking to fund projects that will be about a journalism investigation or it will be a journalism course or purely research. Uh, not that those things are not important, but the focus here of the challenge is to create new products, to give you an opportunity to think about your portfolio and also to think about your business strategy and think about new business models. So, so um, just to echo what you are saying, first, under GNI, the Google News Initiative, we have many other programs to support education, media literacy, and stuff, right? So this is why it's uh, a broader initiative. Um, but, but to give you a very concrete example, because we fully understand that there is a gray zone, and that's why we're asking you to explain, right? For example, if you are a small startup, of course, your core project will be basically what you are presenting because you are very small and that's what you are creating, right? So it's going to be an iteration of what you are trying to achieve, an evolution of that, right? So there is gray zone. Another example about um, uh, training, let's say training. Um, if it's just about training journalists, not eligible. But imagine you are a financial player and you want to create, to set up MOOCs, massive online course about uh, whatever, right? In your specific expertise, right? And you're going to make a business out of it. If you yeah. ask us just to pay for the content, it's not going to work, but you can put allocate some of your resources to produce the content. What you can ask us to support with would be the creation of all the platform, all the system to generate MOOCs. 
at scale. And if this platform is, for example, a open source and others can use it, that's even better, right? So if you generate a business around MOOCs, that might be eligible, but not only the training content part. Yeah, we're, we're asking you to take a hard look on your portfolio of products and think about like strategies and ways to diversify it and create new opportunities and experiences as well. I, mindful of time, Ludo, because I know you have to leave soon. I wanted to ask you a few questions that Maria Clara Cabral, Gaston, Lucas Maia, and also Henrique Gomez asked about the application process and other tips too. So Luke, um, Maria Clara asked, when do we have to attach the 10 slides that we request? Um, Gaston asked, are there specific ways to package the products that you would recommend or discourage? Lucas asked, projects in the initial phase without legal registration could apply. We answered that. And then Hiki finally asked, are there sample pitch decks that we can use as a reference? How can you have such relevant questions? Marco, do me a favor. For next challenges in other region, and when we do online in Gaut, let's make sure we are using those questions because they are very good. And I, I love them because it demonstrates that the people that are asking that, they read and they, they are thinking already. So very simple for the additional documentation, which can be a business plan, a pitch deck, or whatever you want to send. At the end of the application process, you will see a box with an email, which is again the LATAM GNI challenge email, and you will send in attached document in any format you want your pitch decks, your Word document, all additional information. Even if we don't answer, no worries, we are looking at it. If you are uh, shortlisted for interviews, then we're going to use it and we might even ask for additional information. So, no worries. Send it over via email. Um, then do we have, um, I take both, do we have inspiration and what is our recommendation uh, in terms of pitch, pitch deck? We don't really have an inspiration, but you will look at the FAQ and you will see, we suggest to structure your deck the following way. And I think it's always interesting because it helps you to pitch the project. Um, Basically, what is the problem? Everything starts with, let's say, a problem or an opportunity. What are you trying to solve? What are you trying to achieve? Why do you think it's useful? How do you, how are, second slide, how are you tackling the issue? What is your proposal? What is your offer? Then, what has been tried before? A kind of benchmark. And that's totally fine to say other are tried similar thing, but we think that in this market, it can be different. Then it goes to the opportunities. Why do you think you have opportunities? Market opportunities, adoptions opportunities, business opportunities. An overview of the numbers, right? And then uh, something that is more why it's innovative, impact on the uh, news ecosystem, how do you plan to share? So it's basically eight to 10 slides, very focused on the idea. Two uh, simple tips for you. First, have in mind that at some point for the selected project, Marco or myself will have to go in front of the jury and to pitch your project. So we will be advocating, pitching, explaining the project, give us bullets give us all the elements to understand so we can be good advocate of the project. The yeah, second you your project to the jury. Yeah, and the second thing, which is I'm doing funding for project for more than five year, six years now, and I think the most common pitfall is that people are focused on what they want to achieve. I'm a former journalist. I know how we want to achieve stuff because we are frustrating not to see this existing, but sometimes not enough focus on the consumer, the reader, the audience. Try to explain your project from someone that doesn't know anything about digital. Try to explain what will be the end product in very simple words and focus on the end user. So that is my main tip.
Yeah, and don't worry, the, 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 the deck, the presentation needs to be in English, but worry about your idea, worry about the project, and make it easy for us to understand. And we will ask following up questions, uh, follow up questions. If we don't understand something, we'll mail you back and reach out to you guys. Yes, uh, and, and look, Marco, um, I think we can even be flexible on that because this is a question we had via email. If your prototype is in your own language, in Spanish or, or Portuguese, yeah. that's totally fine. Don't translate a prototype that you want to share. If your deck is partially or even in Spanish or Portuguese, or Portuguese, that's that's fine. We can live with that. We can use Google Translate as well, or the people that speak your language in the team. We are a diverse team. What we need is the application itself to be in English. Right. That's that's a good tip, Ludo. Uh, mindful of time. I know we know we run out of but time. If we, if we need three three more minutes. That's fine, uh, Marco. I can take five. Yeah, minutes. yeah. I just just wanted to reinforce the point about the email that you can see. Uh, on on the screen there, uh, it's the Latem GNI Challenge at Google.com. This this is a real email. It's an email. It's an alias that comes to my inbox, Ludo's inbox, the rest of the team, and we're all always, always answering your questions. So uh, don't feel don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, the deadline is the twenty second, twelve days. Make sure you send your uh, applications by then, and. I think I think it we're at time where we answered all of the questions that folks have asked. So thank you very much, Ludo, for taking part of this. Also, thanks Irene that's on the backstage helping us setting this up. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Irene. And thank you uh, for all of you that attended uh, this hangout done from Sao Paulo, Singapore, and Paris. So this is uh, a, a truly uh, a true collaboration on our side. Thanks for attending. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks everyone. Have a great week.